My name is Jim, and we're going to be talking about a way to improve my air compressor today on Manjaro. Over in the corner here is my nice big blue Quincy air compressor. So it's a three and a half horsepower unit. It's got a 60 gallon tank. Super handy to have. I use it down in the shop here all the time. I've got a nice hose reel mounted there. I use it to spray paint, use air tools, just blow dust off stuff. Very handy. I've also got a T up in the corner there that goes out into the garage, and out there I can use it in the car, on the car for impact wrenches, other air tools, or even fill up tires. Really great. Only problem is that it's got a big tank, and that take, takes quite a long time to fill if I were to leave it empty all the time. So what I first did when I got the air compressor is I put a ball valve on the exit, and I could leave the tank full all the time and just close the valve when you know it wasn't in use. The hoses that come off the tank, they're pretty well sealed, but there's a couple leaks here and there. Uh, behind me, I'm not sure you can see it, but there's a, I've got a, a zigzag of copper tubing, mostly to cool the air down as it's coming off. Um, it also helps draw moisture out of it. There's a moisture trap down at the bottom. That way, if I'm using it for spraying paint, there's no moisture out in the paint, and also um, you know there's, the air is cool then, so it doesn't hurt the, the, the finish that I'm trying to put on. Works really well, but with all that setup, the hose reel, the, the hose going out into the garage, it does leak a little. So with that ball valve, I can just keep the tank pressurized and don't have to worry about it losing air over time. However, the problem is when that ball valve was a manual ball valve, it's tucked back in the corner, it was really hard to get to. So I frequently would forget or just be lazy and not close the valve. And then slowly over time, the air would draw down, the compressor would sense that the, you know, the pressure in the tank was low and it would kick on. Now, not really a problem if I'm down here in the shop, However, sometimes it would take, you know, four, five, six, seven hours, which meant that I was either upstairs watching TV, upstairs asleep, it's quite noisy, would wake me up, not a great situation. So instead, I replaced the manual ball valve with an electric ball valve. I put a switch right next to my light switch, and that way, when I was leaving the shop, I thought, you know, I leave the shop, turn off the light switch, turn off the air compressor. Should work really well. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, I can't remember to turn off the air compressor, so still, I'll forget, I'll turn it on to use it for something, and then I'll forget, and inevitably in the middle of the night, the air compressor kicks on, wakes up me, the wife, nobody's happy, so not a great situation. So I finally decided I need to figure out something to do to fix that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this little microcontroller. This is called a, a Cutie Pie is the name of it. It's an ESP32 based microcontroller. It's got Wi-Fi on it, and it's got a couple uh, analog and digital outputs. So I can use this along with this little relay to control the ball valve. Now, to control the, the Cutie Pie, what I'm going to do is wire the same switch that I was using to control the ball valve, but I'm going to wire it into this microcontroller first, and then I'll have the controller say, if the valve has been open for more than, say, two hours, close the valve. He's probably done, he's probably forgotten about it, we'll close the valve. And then the next time I'll have to turn it on, off and on again, and it'll open back up, and it should work great. The other thing I can do, because this has Wi-Fi on it, I can make a little app uh, for my phone or just a web page where I can go and use my phone to turn on the air compressor. That'll be great when I'm in the garage, don't have to come run down here to turn it on and, and or forget to turn it back off again, same thing. So I can just whip out my phone, click a little button and open up the air compressor and use it out in the garage. So that'll be super handy as well. I was also thinking that there's been a couple of times where I'd like to know what the temperature and humidity is down here, you know, for fin doing finishing work or uh, epoxy, stuff like that would come in handy. Rather than just get a regular temperature sensor, what I'm going to do is wire a temperature sensor into the microcontroller and then put a little display on it. I've got the thing anyway, might as well do that. Then I can look at my phone, see what the temperature is, probably won't ever do that, but if I'm down here I'll be able to look at it and see you know, if, it's, if it's too cold for epoxy or it's too hot for you know, spraying finish or whatever it may be. So let me get these wired up and we'll take a look and see how this works. Alright, I've got this all working, all wired up, I've got the software written for it. So in the center of the breadboard here, you can see this is the cutie pie. And then over on the side here, there's a temperature and humidity sensor. Also happens to do pressure, which I'm not sure if I will ever need that for anything. Can't imagine I would, but it's there. It's what I happen to have. So I've got this nice big toggle switch here. Nice snappy action on that. And that's connected down at the bottom here is a little relay. And I'll connect that to the ball valve. I've also got this little... 16 character two row display here and I'll use that to display the temperature. I don't really like this display. It's something I've had kicking around for a long time. It just happened to be, you know, what was handy and easy to get working on here. So I'll probably eventually find, uh, you know, a nicer display to use. Of course, it's only just spent laying the temperature and humidity, maybe the state of the valve or something. I don't know. It's, it's, it's not super critical um, that it's a really nice display, but 
I'm gonna see if I can find something a little bit better for it. So as you can see, this is a you know this is a bit of a rat's nest here with how I was you know, playing around getting it set up in the breadboard. So I need a more permanent solution for this. So I'm gonna solder this all onto a little protoboard thing, and then I'll also 3D print a case so that I can mount this, keep all the dust and stuff off it, and hook it up to the air compressor. So I've got the QD Pie mounted here and a little piece of uh, protoboard here. So I'm just gonna start soldering this on and then I'll solder on the other sensor and some wires to connect everything. All right, so we're gonna do the ground wire first. So I got that laid out. We'll put it in here and solder that in. And then the way this board is laid out, none of these pads are connected. It's not like they're in rows or something. So I just have to connect them with some solder. That's good enough for the ground and the power. Now we just have to do that for the other uh, connections. We're just finishing up here. I'm soldering on the wires for the relay last here. Just got to do the ground down here and then the signal wire over here. Spin it around and get the power wire over here. Five volts and then just clip the leads off that are sticking out a little bit. I'm not going to cut the pins off just in case I want to ever take that out and use it for something else. Alright, and we have the microcontroller wired to the sensor. We've got some wires for our little display. I've got to plug in the back of that. And then we have some wires going off to our switch, switch here, and some wires going off to the relay down at the end here. So I just drew up a quick case here in Fusion 360. Just simple, it's got a little cutout for the screen, then some mounting points on the inside for some screws to hold the screen in place. Then there's a little cutout on the side for the wires to get out, the USB-C to power the, the microcontroller, and also the, the wires to the switch and the relay. Uh, I've got also four screw holes on the back here, and I'll put a, a back cover on it once I'm sure everything fits in there nicely. may have to make this a little bit deeper or wider or something to make sure everything fits. So. I've got all that mess cleaned up off the breadboard, got it on a little protoboard, all soldered up nicely on here. I've got a, the switch wired, and I'll mount that separately. And then I've got the relay, it's not attached right now because I had to put it over by the switch. But you can see it's running, it runs off USB-C. You can see when I flip the switch, relay comes on, light on that changes to let me know what's going on. And then I flip it again, it'll turn off. And when I turn it on, about two hours later, it'll turn itself off again. So I won't have to worry about forgetting to turn off the air compressor now. Now you see I have these four wires here up for my display here. And I printed out this nice case for everything to go in here, like that, which would have looked real nice, except I somehow managed to fry this display while I was trying to put everything together. I'm not sure what happened there. These are pretty durable things, but somehow it's not working anymore. It was working before. So um, I didn't really like this display anyway, so I was going to look for another one. Not a big deal. So I'll have to find a different one and then wire that one in. The other thing this can do is on uh, an iPad or phone or whatever, I've got a little website set up, so it'll tell me what the temperature and the humidity is there too, and then I can use it from here to turn it on and off as well. So that'll be super handy for when I'm in the garage, want to turn it off, don't want to have to run all the way downstairs to turn it on, turn it off. I can use my phone and just go to the website for it. Work really well. So the last thing that I want to do with this is I want to add on this little guy here. This is a uh, particle sensor, a dust particle sensor. So it measures how much dust is floating around in the air and it'll tell me you know, if, it's, if it's healthy, if it's not so healthy. If I've been doing a lot of sanding, I should be able to see that on there and you know, be able to tell if I should turn on the air filtration or do something else to make sure that um, you know, it's healthy down here. So I thought that'd be a kind of nice, interesting thing to add on to here since I'm gonna have a display anyway. These things are pretty inexpensive. Figured I'd throw one of these on here. So if you know of a display that I should be using for this, please let me know. I've been trying to figure out what a good one is. Um, I don't want something that's too big, but I want it to be bright enough that I can see it kind of from anywhere in the shop. It's kind of a mixed bag. If I make it bigger, then it'll be easier to see, but it takes up more space and everything. So kind of playing around with what I want to, want to see there. So if you want the code for this, it's pretty, uh, pretty terrible. I'm not the greatest coder, so, um, but I, I'll be happy to share that if anybody's looking for it. Otherwise, thanks for watching.
Thank you.